STS-7 was NASA's seventh Space Shuttle mission, and the second mission for the Space Shuttle Challenger. During the mission, Challenger deployed several satellites into orbit. The shuttle launched from Kennedy Space Center on June 18, 1983, and landed at Edwards Air Force Base on June 24. STS-7 was notable for carrying Sally Ride, America's first female astronaut. Topic: Kuru. Topic: Support crew. John E. Blaha. Roy D. Bridges Jr., Ascent Capcom. Guy S. Gardner. Terry J. Hart. John A. McBride. Brian D. O'Connor, Entry Capcom. Topic: Crew seat assignments. Topic Mission Summary STS seven began on June eighteenth, nineteen eighty three, with an on time liftoff at seven thirty three AM Eastern Daylight Saving Time. It was the first spaceflight of an American woman, Sally K. Ride, the largest crew to fly in a single spacecraft up to that time, five people, and the first flight that included members of NASA's Group 8 astronaut class, which had been selected in 1978 to fly the Space Shuttle. President Ronald Reagan also sent his personal favorite at Jelly Belly Jelly Beans with the astronauts, making them the first jelly beans in space. The crew of STS-7 included Robert L. Crippen, commander, making his second shuttle flight, Frederick H. Hawk, pilot, and ride, John M. Fabian and Norman Thagard, all mission specialists. Thagard conducted medical tests concerning space adaptation syndrome, a bout of nausea frequently experienced by astronauts during the early phase of a space flight. Two communications satellites, Annex C-2 for Telesat of Canada, and Palapa B-1 for Indonesia, were successfully deployed during the first two days of the mission. The mission also carried the first shuttle pallet satellite, SPAS-1, which was built by the West German aerospace firm Messerschmitt Bulko Blohm. SPAS-1 was unique in that it was designed to operate in the payload bay or be deployed by the Remote Manipulator System as a free-flying satellite. It carried ten experiments to study formation of metal alloys in microgravity, the operation of heat pipes, instruments for remote sensing observations, and a mass spectrometer to identify various gases in the payload bay. It was deployed by the RMS and flew alongside and over Challenger for several hours, performing various maneuvers, while a U.S. supplied camera mounted on SPAS-1 took pictures of the orbiter. The RMS later grappled the pallet and returned it to the payload bay. STS-7 also carried seven gas canisters, which contained a wide variety of experiments, as well as the OSTA-2 payload, a joint U.S.-West German scientific pallet payload. Finally, the orbiter's KU band antenna was able to relay data through the tracking and data relay satellite to a ground terminal for the first time. STS-7 was scheduled to make the first shuttle landing at Kennedy Space Center's then new shuttle landing facility. However, unacceptable weather forced a change to runway 15 at Edwards AFB. The landing took place on June 24, 1983, at 6.57 a.m. Pacific Daylight Saving Time. 
The mission lasted six days, two hours, 23 minutes, and 59 seconds, and covered about 2.2 million miles during 97 orbits of the Earth. Challenger was returned to KSC on June 29. Incidents <inaudible> 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 STS-7 experienced the first known external tank bipod ramp foam shedding event during launch. This was the root cause of the eventual loss of Columbia during STS-107 almost two decades later. While Challenger was on orbit, one of its windows was damaged non-critically by space debris. Topic: Mission Insignia. The seven white stars in the black field of the mission patch, as well as the arm extending from the shuttle in the shape of a seven, indicate the flight's numerical designation in the Space Transportation System's mission sequence. The five-armed symbol on the right side illustrates the four male, one female crew. Topic Gallery Topic Wake Up Calls NASA began a tradition of playing music to astronauts during the Gemini program, and first used music to wake up a flight crew during Apollo 15. Each track is specially chosen, often by the astronauts' families, and usually has a special meaning to an individual member of the crew, or is applicable to their daily activities. See also List of human spaceflights List of Space Shuttle missions <laughs>